phones, mute your phones if you will. Uh, you can tell everybody, you can text them to say they can watch online at uh, lrtouchdown.com or our Facebook page. Uh, you can also listen on 103.7 The Buzz. That will be live as well. So three ways that folks can listen. Just make sure you mute your phone if you don't, uh, if you don't mind. Do you want to thank our amazing sponsors real quickly? Uh, 103.7 The Buzz. Uh, Peyton was just on, uh, on the show with Justin uh, Moore. Uh, not Justin Moore, with uh, Wes Moore and Justin Aker. We appreciate them. Uh, being here every week live, thanks to 103.7 The Bus. AY Media, Heather Baker, happy birthday, Heather, yesterday. Happy 32nd, very nice. Thank you for all your great, yeah, that's right, give, give, give her a nice little round of applause for turning 32. Thank you for your great coverage uh, of the Touchdown Club uh, with your uh, magazines. Uh, uh, AY Magazine, Arkansas Money and Politics, we appreciate that. The Hatcher Agency, Greg Hatcher, home of outrageous service. Thank you, Greg, for what you do for the club, as well as uh, Twin City Limo and Popeye, always taking care of all of our guest speakers. We appreciate that. War Memorial Stadium, 75th anniversary. You know, Rex, last week, you had two undefeated teams. You had Parkview and Hot Springs. Parkview got the best of Hot Springs in a big way, but I love that War Memorial Stadium is still being used in a great way. We appreciate them on their 75th anniversary. Uh, Arkansas Urology, uh, CEO Scott Davis, President, plus Christian uh Director of Marketing, we appreciate them. This Thursday, uh, in North Little Rock, free screenings at the last for their kickoff to men's health, 65-inch TV for those who go get tested. You got a chance to win that. So, guys, one finger for one TV. That's the way I look at it. It's all good. I'm sorry. Should I, I probably shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. It's, just, it's, 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 it's worthwhile to do it. It's over with quick. Um, do you want to thank Pulaski County Farm Bureau, Todd Dennis and Stephen uh, Riker? We appreciate them. Great service with great right rates, delivering the Farm Bureau promise for 80 years in Pulaski County. Where are they at over here? There he is. Where, where's Todd at? I want to see them. There he is right there. Thanks, Todd and Stephen Riker. Appreciate them. Dairy Queen. Appreciate Blake and Nelson Lively and Todd Denton. Go by and get you a treat. Uh, maybe when, when things don't go as well, you need that, uh, that sugar comfort. They can take care of you at, uh, at Dairy Queen. Simmons Bank Arena. This just announced today. Cody Johnson here February 10th. Stevie Nicks, March 6th. Stevie Nicks, yeah, Tommy, Karen, listen, that, listen, Stevie Nicks, that's big. We love Stevie Nicks. So uh, go to their website to check out all their upcoming concerts. We appreciate their support. Summerwood Sports, uh, the new uh, facility, sports facility in Bryant, doing amazing things. You know, the whole crew went to see the Chiefs play the Bears yesterday, and Roger and the Hendrickses sat right in front of Taylor Swift. How about that? Yeah, how about that? They'll be back next week, but appreciate Summerwood Sports and their sponsorship. Advantage Service Company, One Call Does It All. Thanks, Kevin Brooks. Been doing it for 35 years. We appreciate them. HVAC, plumbing, electrical generators, they do it all. Thank you to Kevin and Advantage Service Company. Wright, Lindsay, and Jennings, appreciate their support as always. Charlie, great to see you is, is here. You hardly ever miss a meeting. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we've got three Cliff Harris Award winners because of Wright, Lindsay, and Jennings playing in the league right now. You have uh, uh, Corey Ballantyne, who plays for the Packers. Uh, uh, Kyle Duggar, who plays for the Patriots. Uh, 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 who's a, who's a, Matt Judon, who was an outstanding, he was a finalist for us. So these awards that we do, sometimes you don't get to know what happens to them as they go forward in their career. But the Cliff Harris Award is being uh, represented all across uh, the country every Sunday with NFL action. So we appreciate Wright, Lindsay, and Jennings and their sponsorship. Uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Wally Hall, Amanda Copley, all 19 years. We appreciate their support. Could not have done it without them. We'll be introducing a really outstanding All-Arkansas Preps Player of the Week here shortly. Thank you, Amanda and Wally, for your support. Crane Automotive, the largest dealer group in Arkansas, 20 locations across Arkansas, 1,000 Arkansans employed by Crane Automotive. We appreciate their family and Christian Crane being the leader there. Go by and see them, if you will. Tell them the Touchdown Club sent you. Sissy's Law Cabin, I will tell you this, Rex, uh, you will want to be here next week, right, Jim? That very special day next week for uh, Jim McMahon, thanks to sissies. Now, so, so is it more, is this geared towards women, men, or both, Jim? It's always both. It's always both. Okay. So they've been around for 50 years. Let's just say this. This is one of those ones where you, there's going to be multiple folks that are going to walk away very happy after the Jim McMahon. And listen, I think this thing will be sold out pretty quickly. Yeah. Just for FYI. So thank you to Sissy's Log Cabin for your support of the Touchdown Club. Double B's, uh, Gas It, Grab It, and Go, Steve Lytle, Ed Light. We appreciate them. Over 30 locations across the state of Arkansas. And Oakland Sports, we appreciate them. I had my four bets. Where's Zach at? Zach here? 
So, so I told you guys, I told you Dion's run was over with last week. Remember, I told you that. I said, it's over. So I got that one. I got Oklahoma beating Cincinnati, 2-0. and And you know who I didn't go with? I didn't trust the Razorbacks. I didn't trust the Razorbacks. And look, and look what happened. They showed me. But are we happy that they showed us, that they showed up and played well? It's okay, Zach. I don't mind missing that one. I don't mind missing that one. So uh, follow my, uh, my, my picks each week uh, on Oakland Sports app. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I learn every week, Zach. I'm learning all the different options. You said it was very impressive that I teased down to get the Oklahoma win. Um, but here's the deal. I, listen, I'm so happy with the way the Razorbacks played. It doesn't matter. I'm glad for them. But follow me each week there. A lot of fun there with Oakland Sports. We appreciate their sponsorship. And last but not least, uh, it's great to have Simmons Bank as our presenting sponsor. Daniel Robinson here today and George Schaefer. Appreciate you, you guys and at Simmons Bank. When I, I get approached when I'm in the press box down in Baton Rouge and people start talking to me about the Touchdown Club, it's because of, of your presenting sponsorship that raised the bar that, and all these other sponsors that – that now we have become the talk of the, of the country for when it comes to Touchdown Club. And that's something, listen, not anybody else is doing this. So let's give a big round of applause to all of our great sponsors. They do ask about Rex. You know, they're going to try to do an NIL deal and take Rex away from us. I said, you can't afford Rex Nelson. You can't afford Rex Nelson. Although for the right amount of food, he might be willing to take a look. So, me too. Just saying. Uh, I do want to thank our amazing Touchdown Club team, Dwayne Duncan, Matt Johnson, Chris Kane, R.J. Hawk, Meredith Hell, Vines Brookshire Agency, as I mentioned, Rex, uh, Debbie Wyman, and all of our great volunteers. That's why we're the best in the country. It takes all of you showing up and making this be a great environment. It takes all these volunteers to do this. They do it because they love the club. Let's give a round of applause to all of them if you don't mind. Got R.J. Hawk back from the West Coast. R.J., come up and introduce our outstanding uh, West Coast. Yes, that was for, yeah, you, you were, you're not moving out there, but we've got an outstanding All-Arkansas Preps Player of the Week. Well, I, you know, I, I have been gone two weeks, had the legislature two weeks ago, and I had to go to California, and I come back, and I, I'm like, we got somebody from Saline County here, and that's my neck of the woods, so I'm pretty happy about that. This week's All-Arkansas Preps Player of the Week is an outstanding one as usual. You guys hear me talk about stats, so I'm going to go back two weeks for you to week three against Little Rock Catholic, in which the Benton Panthers won 49-42. Our Player of the Week was 21 of 33 for 333 yards passing with four touchdowns. He also rushed seven times for 60 yards and a touchdown in that game. As I said, they won a barn burner 49-42 against Catholic. Then go back last week. Our player of the week only played the first half of that game. He was 9 of 12 for 270 yards and four touchdowns in one half. So really, if you think about the six quarters that he's played so far, he's completed 67% of his passes for 604 yards and nine total touchdowns in two weeks. His mom, Leslie, and his dad, Andy, are here as well. as A whole entourage from Saline County made their way. Brad Harris, his head coach, is here as well. This week's All-Arkansas Preps Player of the Week is Drew Davis from Benton High School. All right, Rex, it was a heck of a weekend in college football all across the country. Uh, nobody does it better than Rex Nelson. Let's please give him a round of applause. Rex Nelson, everybody. Thank you, David, and thank all of you for coming out. We'll get the heartbreaker out of the way at the top. LSU 34, Arkansas 31. Another dadgum three-point game in that series, David. Stuck on it. 21-yard field goal, five seconds left, as you know. Breaks the hog's heart. That is four consecutive games in the series decided by three points. Unfortunately, the Hogs are one and three in those four games. Baton Rouge, tough place to play. Arkansas now three, 14 and one all time in Baton Rouge. LSU now won three consecutive games after losing that opener Labor Day weekend. KJ Jefferson, good night through the air. 21 of 31, 289 yards with three touchdowns. 
Jaden Daniels was a little bit better, though. 20 of 29, 320 yards and four touchdowns. So you really and the nation really saw two good quarterbacks going against each other. How about Arkansas State winning its conference opener, though, after that slow non-conference start? 44-37 over Southern Mississippi. Red Wolves are 2-2 two and two overall, 1-0 and oh in conference. They have got a true freshman named Jalen Rayner. Remember that name. He's the real deal. He accounted for 366 total yards in the game. He had three touchdown passes, two scoring runs. He's the first true freshman to start at quarterback for ASU since Elliott Jacobs back in 2001. So it's been 22 years. He was 11 of 21 passing, 233 yards. He rushed for another 133 yards on 17 carries. So again, remember that name, Jalen Rayner. UCA wins a conference game too. How about those Bears? 52-17 over Abilene Christian in their first United Athletic Conference opener. So you got UCA in the UAC. I've got to, I've got to yeah, practice I'm that. Playing ACU. Playing ACU, yeah, Abilene Christian. Boy, that had to be a mess on the air. Run, another name you need to remember now. I'm telling you, remember this name. Running back Shunderick Powell from Hoxie in northeast Arkansas had 23 carries for 258 yards rushing and a touchdown. He also caught three passes for 25 yards and a score. UCA 2-2 two two overall, 1-0 and oh in conference. Powell transferred from the University of North Alabama in the spring. So again, remember that name. I think he's going to have an outstanding season. On Thursday night, national television on ESPN, ESPNU, UAPB unfortunately fell in a close one, 31-24 to Alabama A&M. The Golden Lions are now 1-3. and three. Now, in NCAA Division II, the only top 25 battle in the country where two top 25 teams were playing each other last weekend was right here in Arkansas. Number 10, Harding, went to number 20, Henderson, and won 27-16. Harding trailed 9-7 and halftime. Harding had only 146 yards of total offense in the first half, but had 217 on the ground alone in the second half in the win. Meanwhile, Washita, which came in ranked number four in the country, won its 16th consecutive conference game, 45-25 at UAM. Kendall Givens had a career-high 170 yards rushing on 22 carries. Quarterback Riley Harms, 17 of 24, passing for 221 yards. And in Magnolia, SAU kept Arkansas Tech winless with a 49-3 win. Jarek Scales rushed for 151 yards for the Mule Riders. So here's where the Arkansas schools are right now. Remember, all games are conference games in the Great American Conference. Washtaw's 4-0, Harding's 4-0. Henderson's 3-1, Southern Arkansas's 3-1, UAM's 2-2, Arkansas Tech is 0-4. Among our Division III and NAI schools, Hendricks is 2-2. After a 53-42 win over Millsaps, Lyon College is 2-2. After a 30-7 win over Westminster, and Arkansas Baptist drops to 0-4, losing 31-19 to Oklahoma Panhandle. Now... Back to the SEC. Some of you were writing the Alabama obituary a little bit early, I fear. Everybody was on Bama. Well, 2410 as the mentor, Nick, spanks the student, Lane. Alabama and Ole Miss now both 3-1 and one overall. That was the conference opener for both of them. It was Alabama's eighth consecutive win over a Rebel team. Georgia is 4-0 after a 49-21 win over UAB. Tennessee is 3-1 after a 45-14 win over the University of Texas at San Antonio. Florida also 3-1 after a 22-7 win over UNC Charlotte. How about Missouri? They're off to their first 4-0 start in 10 years. 
the Tigers beat a good Memphis team. Memphis came in 3-0, 34-27 Saturday in a game played at St. Louis. South Carolina is 2-2 two and two in conference, or 2-2 two and two overall, 1-1 one and one in conference after beating Mississippi State 37-30. State's 2-2 two and two overall, 0-2 oh in the SEC. Kentucky 45, Vanderbilt 28. Kentucky's off to a 4-0 start. 1-0 in conference, Vanderbilt's 2-3 and 0-1. And, oh and, and this week's opponent, those Aggies, and I should have brought a good Aggie joke, David, and I just didn't do it. Those Aggies are 3-1 and one overall, 1-0 one oh in conference after beating Auburn 27-10 in College Station. Auburn falls to 3-1 and one overall, 0-1 oh in conference. So you got that one at Jerry World, 11 a.m., early kickoff. Now here in the state, You've got Southern University out of Baton Rouge at UAPB. You've got Southeastern Oklahoma at Washita. Southwestern Oklahoma at Harding. Northwestern Oklahoma, we got all our directions in today, at Arkansas Tech. East Central Oklahoma at UAM. In the Brain Bowl, you've got Sewanee at Hendricks, and you've got Texas Wesleyan at Arkansas Baptist. So guess what? Games at Pine Bluff, Arkadelphia, Searcy, Russellville, Monticello, Conway, and Little Rock. That's seven cities. No excuse. Get out and see a college football game on Saturday, everybody. Thank you. Peyton, does this make your head spin? <laughs> Some people, our, our guests are so funny when they come, they just tap out. They go, my goodness, they can't keep up with the Rex. By the way, uh, talking about significant numbers, you know, I mentioned that uh, the big 6-0 is coming fast and hard for me and uh, Roger Scott. Uh, I want to do something formal. I'm just going to make a reference here. It's my understanding that this gentleman next to me, uh, Rex Nelson, has been calling Washita Baptist football games for 40 years this year, 40 years. How about that, Rex Nelson? What a commitment, my good, 40 years. Wow, that is a fantastic, Rex. And we, we're gonna do something special for you at some point, for sure. A um, Couple things we wanna do, we wanna introduce some special guests. Uh, I love the fact that we get here, we have folks get here very early to get a good seat. We call them the door rattlers. Because they're here, they want to get a seat. They're not, they may not be a 50-yard line member, but they want to find the best seats. And we appreciate everybody who gets here. And we appreciate people who uh, drive a long way. So I know that Steve and Cindy Lance are here. Rex, Steve Lance is the voice of the Hope Bobcats for many, many years. Where are they at? Stand up. Let's welcome them. They drive two hours every week. Where are they at? Where are they at? Two hours every week from Hope to be here. Two hours, Peyton. Two hours of driving here. Does anybody else drive longer than that? Anybody else want? Is that, is that, so very good. I don't, do we have a pride? Can we give them some extra collard greens today to take home with them? Um, thank you, Steve and Cindy. Appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, I noticed our good friend, the pigskin preacher, Chuck Monad. Great to see you here. Uh, I know you, hate, you were glad to see Michigan win, but you hated to see Ohio State come back and beat the Catholics at Notre Dame. So I know that. But great to see you here. Uh, I think Chris Curry, is Chris Curry here today? The head baseball coach at ULR, let's give him a round of applause. Chris is a great guy, does a great job. See, Chris, we love other sports here. It's all about football, but we want to recognize that. And a guy that, that I spent many, many years with, waking up to every morning with my, uh, he's a legendary radio guy. And um, why is it that I've gotten older, I get more emotional? I don't know what it is. What's happened? Does this happen? Does this happen to everybody? <laughs> Really? So my good buddy, one of the legendary radio guys of all time in this, in this state, uh, Tommy Smith is here. And I always love to see Tommy and his wife, Karen. Tommy, stand up. Let's give you a round of applause. Tommy Smith, everybody. They, uh, they came to me, the, the owner of the bus came to me and said, what do you think about doing a morning show with you? And Tommy Smith, Tommy had been fired at Magic 105 for being a bad boy, you know. And I was, I was supposed to be, you know, Captain America, you know, the good, good guy. And, uh, and, they, and I said, are you kidding me? A chance to work with a legendary figure like Tommy Smith. Um, and Tommy, how many years? He was 17, 18 years together. And 
you wake up and you're with somebody four hours every morning, you get to know them. And what a talented guy that could have gone anywhere in the country uh, decided to stay here. And uh, certainly I, I consider it a blessing to have done that so many years. I know that Roger Scott, who is my partner along with uh, uh, Justin Moore, says the same thing. He helped give Roger his start too. But a legendary guy, and, and uh, Tommy, love you. Glad to have you here as well. Um, also, too, I wanted to ask, so you heard that I screwed that up on the Razorbacks deal with the Oakland Sports app. So I, I thought that, that LSU were, it was going to run, I'll be honest, was going to run us out of the stadium. I didn't, what I saw Saturday is a team I had not seen in three weeks, which I'm very happy about. So the question is, for next week, Arkansas is a five-and-a-half-point underdog against the Aggies. How do you feel? Do you feel good about this game going down to, to, going down to, to Arlington or no? Yes. yes. If you feel good, raise your hand. If you, wow, look at that. Wow. Zach, there you go. You know what my, <laughs> my wager is going to be. Five and a half against those Aggies. You know, it always has been such a big decider in the game, Rex. You know, in our season, that game against Texas A&M. So, up or down after, up or down after that. All right, I'm going to circle that. That's where we're going to go with this. All right, so I know we've had some technical difficulties in what we're going to try to do. Uh, we're going to try to get this side of the room taken care of here in just a second. Um, but I know Peyton... Um, it, to my understanding, you've only done one interview since what happened down in the Gulf of Mexico. That's Michael Strahan for the most part, right? So when I reached out to, to Peyton and asked him if he would do this, he said, yeah, I'll be glad to do it. And um, This is not easy, and we're not going to spend the whole time talking about what happened down in Pensacola, but it's something we're going to bring up because it's, it's a life-changing moment. But you're talking about a, guy, about a guy who really was one of the great Razorback running backs of all time, and he was in one of the great backfields of all time. So I, I appreciate uh, Peyton's willingness to do this, and I know there's, there's a huge gathering of, uh, of the Hillis family. So at this time, uh, if, if you're with, with Peyton in terms of family, would you, I don't know where you're at, you're at here somewhere, will you please stand and let's give them a big welcome. Please stand if you're with mom and dad, uncle, there's mom and there's dad, there's brother. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing career that he had, and we really appreciate that he would take the time to be here. Uh, Matt, if, if you're ready, are you ready to go? Or? Go, ahead. go ahead. She's back there right Okay, Heather, if you'll hit the open from Steve Sullivan, this is our special guest today. Peyton Hillis was a pickup pulling superstar at Conway High. Set up at one mailbox and we'll run four sets of 100 feet, stuff like that, back down, back down, stuff like that. A rock'em, sock'em back who was named the Landers Award winner back in 2003. Then it was off to Arkansas, where Peyton played a co-starring role in one of college football's greatest backfields, McFadden, Jones, and Hillis. Peyton did it all for Arkansas. He rushed for 960 yards. He had just under 1,200 yards receiving. He also returned punts and kickoffs. The Conway native saved his best for his final regular season game. He rushed for two touchdowns and caught two touchdown passes in Arkansas's triple overtime win over then top-ranked LSU. Peyton played seven seasons in the NFL, and who could forget that magical 2010 season? Peyton rushed for 1,177 yards and had almost 500 yards receiving and ended up on the cover of Madden 2012. Please welcome one of the most popular players ever to put on a Razorback uniform, the pride of Conway, Peyton Hillis. Well, man, it's, it's, it's uh, let's see, make, make sure this is on. Check, 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 check. Look at Matt, Matt sprinting around there. He's sprinting. There we go. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, you were here last in 2015. It was, I invited you and Felix to come in. And, uh, uh, you know, at that time, I'm not sure what you, I guess you had just sort of gotten out of the league. But uh, great to have you back. I'm really, really, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much for coming out. And uh, hopefully I can give you all what you paid your money for. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I will say this. Oh, we got, look at that. We got the screen. How about that? Very nice. Good, good job. How about, give it up for Matt Johnson and RJ for getting that done. So, so now I'm seeing that the, the monitor wasn't working. So now he just humiliates me by showing that bicep that he's got hanging out of his, his sleeve there. I used to have one of those back in the day. Jessica, I'm sorry. 
Um, so let's do this. Let's first start off talking about where you're at. You're living up in Springdale, right? Yeah, up in Springdale. I've, uh, I think we moved up there permanently, I think, in 2016. So we've been there ever since. Uh, I mentioned 2015. Matt, if you, <laughs> I don't even know when I'm punch this up. Okay, look at that picture. Oh, my gosh. I love the guy. You look like you sort of got a mohawk on the right. I don't know who that dude in the middle is, but sure, he sure is in shape. I don't know what happened to him, but he disappeared. I just want to let you know, that's what's happened after 19 years of the Touchdown Club. That dude has gone, looks like this now. Um, but you and Felix, how cool was that to bring you guys together? I mean, that was such a great uh, backfield you had back in the day, and Felix was a great guy. You know, uh, we talked earlier, but... Um you know, I couldn't have picked the worst time to try to be a running back University of Arkansas with those guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every time they ask, somebody asks me about them, I always go in, you know, Felix, you know, he would get 10 carries a game, but every one of them would be over 10 yards. Yeah. I mean, he averaging 10 yards a carry in the SEC is remarkable. And then, of course, Darren, you know, any play, I don't care if they have 10 guys in the box, just one play could pop off to 80-yard touchdown. So... You know, I was very blessed to be with those guys, to play with them, and uh, we had some good years. I know you're big on family. Let's, let's take the next shot up here of your family. So point out who everybody we have here is. Uh, that's my brother, uh, I guess, on your furthest right there. Then my mother's next to him. And then that's my sister, Haley. And that's my daughter, Katie. And that's my father, Doug. Now, Doug, where, where, where's your hand, Doug? Where are you at? So, Doug, I was looking through some pictures and, and trying to figure out what kind of personality you had. Let's go to the next picture. I think I found it. Uh, there we go. So did you get your personality from your pops? That's your dad and mom there. What do you think? Oh, you know, my, I could not have been raised better. I mean, honestly, my family is the best family that you always ever put in my life, and I'm very thankful. Very Thank nice. So let's go ahead and talk about, uh, let's go ahead and dive into, uh, you know, I'm from, we were talking before, I'm from the Panhandle, grew up uh, in Panama City and, and very familiar with what the, uh, what the ocean can do out there. So if you don't mind, let's just sort of go back to that day. It was in, I think it was in January, you were down in Pensacola, and uh, this is something where your family had gone there quite a bit, and kids enjoyed it, and uh, just if you would, just, because there are some people, uh, Peyton, that may not have heard the story, so you're, you're sitting there on the beach, and um, tell us what happened. Sorry if I tear up, but um, we got there the night before, and I forgot what date it was exactly, but there was a bad storm, and, you know, looking back on it now, you know, I kind of should have probably been paying attention to that, but we stayed there for the night, and the next morning, uh, my whole family, my girlfriend was with us, everybody staying in the uh, condo, and my mother, she says hey let's take the kids down to the beach and I said you know no big deal my brother he didn't come down my father didn't come down which you know at the end of it it's a blessing but um anyway we got to the beach and it was me my mother and my sister and my brother's wife Emily and uh we had all the uh, grandkids, nieces and nephews, including my own, and my son and Camille, they're the oldest of the, uh, you know, the grandchildren. That's right there. And that's actually the, a picture taken that day. But, um, I remember, um, uh, building sandcastles with my, with my brother's sons and Ori and Camille. I guess at one point I didn't see it, but they're about 15, 20 yards out there. And a riptide took them out. And there's only one scream that a son or our daughter would know it was when my mom yelled. And she pointed out, and I already knew something was wrong. So I, you know, hit up the beach and hit the water. And um, the worst feeling of my life was that I had to pass up my son 
because my brother's daughter is further out. And I knew that, you know, she's a little younger that she couldn't take it. And me swimming past my son was the hardest thing that I ever could have done. But at the same time, uh, I guess my sister, she hit the water too, but I didn't see her. And a gentleman came out with a boogie board and I got to Camille and she kept saying to me, you know, we're going to die. We're going to die. And I said, honey, you're not going to die. <laughs> you're not. Um, man with the boogie board came off and then we took the boogie board off of him and uh, I put my sister and Camille on it and pushed them away and uh, right when that happened uh, I went back for my son he was a little bit further back to the beach and uh, by the time I got to him he was limp <laughs> and uh you know, you kept on seeing his eyes roll back, and I'm sitting there holding, and you're just stuck right here in the middle of this water, and you couldn't move. And, you know, you hear a lot of people say, you know, this is what you do when you're getting a riptide, but, you know, when you're holding your 140-pound child, and you can't move, and you're just thinking at every second, it could be his last. And, when, I mean, we were there for a little while. I mean, from eight to ten minutes. And Todd would come in, and I'd be holding him. He would try to get a breath a little bit. Then 11, 12-foot waves would hit. And uh, I guess I didn't know it, but I was just taking in so much water just from the uh, all the adrenaline that was going on. But... I'm sitting there holding him, and I look back to the beach, and everything started slowing down. And, of course, I see my mother, and I see my brother's wife, Emily, on the beach, and I'm sitting there holding him, and I say, well, you know, I'm not going to make it. I said, Yahweh, please save my son. And uh, I don't care what happens after that. <sighs> but we end up getting out of the riptide, and I'm starting to go to the beach. And uh, my son starts getting a little life back in him. And I push him away, and somebody helped him out of the water. And, and as I was walking to the beach, I just passed out. And... Last thing I remember is my girlfriend, Angela, trying to help me out of the water you know, from party far out, and I kept on falling down and couldn't move, couldn't stand up, and I just kept on taking in more water. But um, that's the last part that I remember that until I woke up in the hospital uh, 10 or 12 days later. And you were uh, on the, uh, I don't know if anybody, I, I didn't want to show. He said he'd, he'd be fine looking at the picture, but I just, you know, didn't want to show, but there were ambulances. There was a helicopter that came out. The Baptist Hospital helicopter came out. And so you just knew you got to the beach. You got to the beach. You knew your son, you know, your niece were okay. And then it blacked out. So you were in the hospital for 10 days. At what point in the hospital did you, could you figure out what was going on? Well, I think that was probably the worst part for me was because, I mean, I passed out not knowing nothing, not knowing if they made it or not. And it seemed like the whole time I was under for two weeks, I was either dreaming about them dying. And me not getting to them on a few different occasions. And then when I'm awake, you know, you're on a ventilator. And I don't know why this would happen, but I could hear my girlfriend or my dad talking. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, uh, I think I heard a, a nurse speaking Spanish. So I was like, what am I doing in Mexico? <laughs> and uh, anyway, like, you're coherent when you're awake. And I just hear them talking like, 
you know, he has to wake up this time or, you know, he'll probably go into coma. And after a few times of hearing that, you know, I started freaking out. And my dad, he, I guess they told him, uh, you know, you play music to help them wake up. So he started playing Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. And I was like, there ain't no doubt I'm in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was just thinking the whole time. But uh, when I woke up, uh, I remember my whole family standing over me and my mom, she got over me and said, Peyton, everybody made it. And that was the biggest relief I've ever felt because I know if if I'd have lost my niece or my son that I wouldn't be able to endure it. I wouldn't be here. But um, also... I know what my brother. My brother, he he uh, had a stroke a few months before this incident, and I just know if my dad or my brother would have went out, it would not have been well. And how Yahweh made everything work out just perfect for my good, and I'm very thankful for that. I just. When I woke up, I remember myself just crying because I didn't know what to think. I was thinking to myself, uh, I felt guilty for not minding to die, and I felt guilty for living or for living at the same time and didn't know, kind of lost myself. But uh, I heard the Lord calling out to me. He's like, Peyton, if it's permissible, then it's necessary. And if it's necessary, it's permissible. And all things, all bad things, work out to your good. And I'm trying to look at every life situation where when you really look at it, you can find the good in all things, even all the bad. And those bad things are the ones that are supposed to make you become perfected and make you be the man that the Lord wants you to be. I, uh, months previous to that, I was not in a good spot anyway, but I found out that the Lord loves you no matter what you do. You always been so very good to me, and I know that no matter what, what I do in my life, what sin I commit, it will never take me away from him. Like the prodigal son in Luke 15. You know, uh, son takes his inheritance, squanders it away, sleeping with pigs and all sorts of things. But when he comes back, father brings him his inheritance. And I know that of all the bad and evil things that we have done or I've done, that I'm forgiven. And I'm very thankful that the Lord showed me that. Well, obviously, I, I know that's that's tough to share, but I appreciate. I know everybody appreciates you sharing that. And then you know you're you're there in the hospital. You don't realize that now it, it's gone. It's national news. I mean, it's a national story, and um, you know, I'm sure you don't realize that at the time, but it has. But I, I, you know, down in Pensacola, there's a there's a former running back, uh, Matt. If you'll punch up that next picture, that. So that guy right there, the all-time leading rusher in NFL history, is from Pensacola. He's, he, he comes by to see you. So was that sort of one of the realizations, of my, my goodness, this thing has gone national, that you got Emmitt Smith coming by to, to check on me? You know, when I was in there, I was going through either a lot of pain, and, you know, you, for a while they had to learn how to walk again and do some stuff like that. But when my father said he was going to come, you know, he was – my hero when I was a kid, you know, that's why I wore number 22. And so he, I think he called me the night after the Cowboys won their first playoff game in a long time and said, I'm going to come down and see you. And, you know, when he came in, he was an upstanding guy, tremendous gentleman, and, uh, you know, really cared about the situation I was in. So that was, that was really nice. Also, too, on your, uh, on your, one of your social media 
accounts. You put this picture, uh, this is your, the staff there, and you just talked about how important everybody, and there's your girlfriend there, talk about how important that, that staff was and, and what they did for you for that time you were there. I, the most incredible staff that anybody could have had. I mean, they were waiting on me hand and foot, you know, for anything that I needed or wanted. And, you know, they kept a lot of people away that should have been kept away. And, uh, I mean, by the time we left, they were like family. And, uh, you know, if, if I, you know, we were even saying, you know, whatever we come to in the future where, you know, we have to be put up, we're going to come back here because it's so good. But, you know, my poor folks, they, they've seen me almost die about six times. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I hope I don't have to put them through too much more of that. <laughs> The, uh, it, has, it had to be a little bit, you know, just, you know, again, you, you said you told me the, the number of texts you got and the number of, of, of people that, you know, all the NFL teams you played for, the Razorbacks, all that. And then you find yourself with Michael Strahan on, on Good Morning America. Did you, did you did, was there ever a moment you look around saying this is, you know, all this is, how this is happening. It's, it's, it's almost crazy how all this is, 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 is happening. Well, you know, when I, when I woke up, everybody was telling me, how much coverage it was getting but at first I didn't really want to talk to anybody you know I didn't really want it to be out there to where maybe my son can hear it again or my daughter or even my niece and uh, that kind of worried me but they kept on reaching out and you know Mr. Strahan being an ex-player I felt kind of comfortable going with him because of all the millions I mean millions of fans and people reaching out for me you know for the best and I felt like I owed them, you know, to tell the story. Well, that was a – I thought you did a great job with, with Strahan. And and, uh, um, and now, obviously, everyone wants to know, so how is your son and how is your niece – how are they doing after all this? Uh, thankfully, it's like nothing ever happened. Um, my son, he – Thank you. My son, he's – all the best parts of me and none of the worst. <laughs> and uh, he's a wonderful kid, great kid. And uh, I'm very thankful to have him. Uh, he makes me proud. And right now he's playing football and he's doing halfway decent. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I to tell the truth. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but my niece, she's a heck of a softball player. She's probably the best athlete in her family, and, you know, she still has all the sass that she did when, before it happened, so I think she's doing all right. So one of the things you have to think uh, that enabled you to do what you did that day was um, the fight, the work ethic, the discipline that you've shown all your life. And, I don't, you know, I don't know if you guys on this side got to see – uh, but if we can, let's put up the video that Sully used. This was you in high school. Not every high school player does it. That's Peyton Hillis there, somewhere in Conway. This was part of your training, uh, pulling trucks. Now, where in the heck did you come up with this idea back when you were 16 or 17 years old to, to do that as a way of training? I, uh, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't remember. <laughs> and... Uh, but I know I picked it up when I was about a sophomore in high school. And to tell you the truth, now that I'm looking back on it, I think it was Ray Lewis that kind of gave me the idea. And then fast forward some years later, I, you know, played him a lot, became good friends. And, you know, it was all so surreal. And I was telling my dad even, uh, I think last week, he called me and, and he's like, man, I knew crap, but he didn't use the word crap. Yeah. I knew crap can float, but you're the best at it. And so, <laughs> and, but, you know, he was, he's just one of those guys that you love being around. He's uh, highly energetic, yeah. and, he, and he makes you smile. So, you know, anything coming from him was always good in my life. Well, if you've forgotten the rare combination that Peyton had of size, strength, uh, hands when it comes to receiving, running routes – uh, let's show up, Matt. Let's go to the video, a few plays of Peyton Hillis when he played for the Razorbacks in those great years back uh, on the hill. We remember that game.
So, <laughs> so did, was there ever a frustration seeing that what you could do there? And you look over there, and there's the, one of the greatest players to ever play college football, Hall of Famer, Derek McFadden. And you, guys, you said Felix Jones over there, he's averaging eight yards a carry. You're thinking, matter there they are right there. Is that, that come at my timing? If could I have been just a few years earlier or later? Was there ever a frustration at that point? Going, man, this is. I, should, I wish I could be getting more carries or more touches. You know, when I was younger, I, I had those thoughts. You know, as time goes on, I've learned that everything that has happened in my life, my choice or not, has been what's best for me. And uh, you know, it built character. You know, the longer you live in this world, the the more the Lord is going to grow you up. And, you know, looking back, I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to play with two guys that amazing because it made me better. So I know that you felt that you, you know, probably, you know, didn't get the exposure that you probably did. Where did you end up going? So what round did you end up going? So it was seventh round? Seventh round. Seventh round, 227, I think, something like that. You go to the Denver Broncos, and um, you're behind a bunch of guys. Uh, had some injuries happen, and – Worked your way up to where you were able to show a little bit of what you could do. Uh, and then all of a sudden there was a trade to the Cleveland Browns. And you're talking about God's timing. Um, blue-collar town, blue-collar city, um, a great fit for you. Same thing. Gets to Cleveland, you're behind 18 guys, it seems. But all of a sudden, guess what happens? Injury, injury, injury. Uh, and you got your chance to show what you could do. Uh, and I want, uh, Matt, if you can find, I want to show you. First of all, let's do this. So before we show the video, I want you to show some pictures of what Peyton Hillis looked like as a, a Cleveland Brown. So if you'll go, uh, there you go. So that's, that, that's number 40. Look at the arms on that dude coming at you. That's not a linebacker. That's a running back. All right, go to the next one. There he goes. Looks at the, he's turning to the Credible Hulk right there on the field. A couple other ones here. I mean, that is, a, that is a load coming at you. How much, you. how much did you weigh, Peyton, around that time? Uh, two, 245, 250. 245 and running probably a 4.5, 4.4. Four, four, four. And the next one, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. Um, <laughs> so, but what's crazy, you see all those muscles and that, and that thickness. Let's look at the video. So this is a couple minutes, and I, I want you to see what the Cleveland uh, fans fell in love with, if you can there, uh, Matt. Like a wrestling move there in the end zone.
How about that? Woo! Woo! <laughs> so uh, that's got to be fun to, to let, your, let your kids see. That's what pops used to do. <laughs> uh, I think one of my son's friends at school showed him one. I never showed him one. I know my brother has tried to show him one other time. And uh, he came home. He goes, Dad, I saw one of your highlight videos. And I said, what'd you think? He goes, you're a lot slower than I thought. <laughs> uh -oh. he, he has that hill of sarcasm. So it's fine. Well, you know, it's amazing. So again, you all of a sudden you're at Cleveland and, and that year, I think it was 2011. I think off the top of my head. So you've been behind all these guys. You get your chance. You become, uh, I think number six in the NFL, the entire NFL, number six in combined rushing and passing yards combined. Guess who was at number five right in front of him? Darren McFadden. So, uh, but you found yourself, this is where you wanted to be. You knew you could do this all along, and, and then Cleveland loves you. They fell in love with you because you were their type of guy. How, how magical was that season? Uh, you know, it's wonderful. I mean, even to this day, I can get off the airport in Cleveland, and everybody's going to know who you are. I mean, they really, it's the, the biggest, smallest city in the country and this was filled with great folks and no matter what kind of like arkansas fans if, doesn't matter how the team's doing they're going to show up and they're going to support their guys um, you know that season was remarkable and you know, i think you're right i've for a long time i've worked myself up you know to that position had to overcome a lot but uh i'm just still very thankful that i got the opportunity following year obviously madden uh probably most of you in this room probably have not played madden but for the first time ever, I mean, this is a million, millions of kids play this game. For the first time ever, Madden decided to open it up to the public. So it was a 32-person bracket. You were numbered, you were the 10th seed on one side. You had Aaron Rodgers and Ray Lewis and all these other folks that had been on there. And yet you got in there and you kept winning and kept winning. Uh, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember who you beat in the final. It may have been, it may have been Ray Lewis. Or Aaron, or Aaron Rodgers, either one. Michael Vick. It was Michael Vick. Yeah. It was Michael Vick. With 70, you, don't, you don't forget, 70% uh, of the vote, he goes on the cover of Madden from, uh, from where he started to get there. Pretty darn amazing. <laughs> Something they can never take away. How, how cool was it getting the fan vote and getting millions? I remember when it was happening. I said, man, Peyton Hillis is going to win this thing. What was that like? Uh, you know, again, it's remarkable. Uh, you know, I think I caught something with the fans and other people around the country that I felt like they finally noticed my hard work. And it was something that a lot of people could relate to. And, you know, it, all because of them while I was on there in the first place. There were so many more players that were better than me. But, you know, I think they said that since that was the first year of the fan vote, that's been the most popular Madden still to this day. And so that's pretty cool. Well, you know, they, uh, they, can't, they, they can't take that away from me. You know, one of the best compliments I used to get is people when I, you know, being older, that say, you sort of look like, you and Peyton Hillis sort of look alike. I was like, really? <laughs> I like that because, you know, I remember at the time that there were also some promotional shots of you that I thought, okay, a match with the first one. Look at there. There we go. Look at that dude. I'll take that. Show the next one. Boom. And then look at there. Tom Cruise right there. Look at that. Where'd you find those? <laughs> uh, but, hey, what, a, what an amazing life you've led. You come right out of central Arkansas and, and uh, uh, accomplished a lot. The greatest thing, though, is that uh, I know you don't like the word hero, but I heard that being thrown around and being mentioned a lot, and I think... Um, that's something that most people say that you are, and I know you've given an answer to what you consider what happened on that day in the beach was not being a hero. Uh, you know, I, like I told Mr. Strahan, I was like, it's not a hero. I mean, there's so many fathers in this room that would do the same thing, and, uh, you know, they wouldn't think twice. But after all this, you know, I was – sitting around thinking how much more love we have to give the fathers in this country because i know that my dad 
did everything he possibly could to make me successful. And, you know, men don't usually get the credit. They just go out there, put their heads down, and work for their family, and, and they hope the best. And a father is the only person that will be proud if his son is better than he is. So uh, I think we need to start showing fathers a lot more love than what we do. I think they're very important. And uh, so if you have a dad out there, you know, or a mom, just make sure you tell them how much you love them because any day could be their last. How about that? Everybody, Peyton Hillis, everybody. Great job, Peyton. Excellent, Peyton. Good job. We'll see you next week for Jim McMahon. Appreciate it.